Hello, this is Fight Me, and in this video, I'll be defending the settlement Kasurgus on medium size with my random teammate that's playing Caucus. We're starting the battle with a very surprising and aggressive move from the defenders, me. I'm playing Nervii, and I did the Grilla deployment with the Arches, which is very unusual and really risky. I knew they had no cover units, so I can shoot him and run away while his infantry can't catch up. And I got some Grilla infantry units ready to support when it's needed. And yeah, I managed to snipe half of his Scorpion crew, which is like half of his ammo, because the crew carries the ammo of a Scorpion and the artillery piece. And Scorpions can be very powerful especially in this settlement so that was a big W for us and this is something which you shouldn't do my teammate has good intentions don't get me wrong he got his archers on the wall trying to support me with my sally out which is very nice of him but every time he shoots now at the infantry he shoots at the shield side of a unit which is very bad you don't want to shoot shield side because that does way less damage than non shield side I showed the difference in the top 10 tips video which you should definitely watch so I asked him if he could take away his archers from the wall and save his ammo for better angles so I saw Pergamon moving a big chunk of his army towards me so I'm just retreating and I'm getting Getting the rest of my sally out army outside to support my gorilla units which are outnumbered. Two Celtic warriors are coming for 8, one Celtic slinger and a scorpion crew which is a special tactic which I will show you now. So as soon as he saw the rest of my sally out army he retreated immediately. Which is a good move from him because you want to keep your army compact and together so you can support it when it's needed. And it's easier to micro this way. The nice thing about these archers is that they can stay hidden while being inside of the enemy because they got the special ability stalled. So you can sneak up on your enemies and just snipe them out of nowhere. This tactic is pretty powerful and very underused but in this battle i will show you the power of this tactic now bringing your scorpion outside the city walls is very risky because you can get overwhelmed and retreating the scorpion will take you hours so that means you will lose the scorpion but it can be also very powerful i call the scorpion the sniper with the silencer you will start losing units but you don't realize it because it's silent it doesn't make noise and it's slowly and that is the power of the scorpion but you got to make sure you only shoot at mid tier units high tier units or clumped up archers don't waste your ammo on low tiers or bad mid tiers so there are a few complications for attacking and defending the gate. You should never attack the gate by your own, especially not with a cheap unit which can destroy it by almost anything, which is happening right now. I could tell you how you could possibly do it, but the best tip for attacking the gate is neutralize the gate by breaking the walls next to the gatehouse. And once it's neutralized, you can safely break the gate with your bedroom run. And then your unit is safe from getting attacked because you're not going through the gate anyway when it's not neutralized because then the oil will kill your units. And that's what's happening right here. The Spartan use got destroyed, obviously. And now he's sending his royal Spartans in to try to break the gate, which which is a terrible choice. Just look at what happens. The human are retreating back inside and the Royal Spartans are following and now they are dying because of the oil. And that's the tricky thing with the gate. Just don't try and break it when it's not neutralized. Over here I use the sneaky stalk tactic with the archers. It is so fun because the enemy doesn't know what's happening and suddenly they're getting shot in the non-shield side. And overall it's just a terrifying thought to have hidden archers in your back lines ready to shoot anything. Now this is always nice to know when they're breaking the walls and your units are standing too close to it, you will lose a chunk of your unit and you should always try and avoid that which I just did there. And yeah, there goes the wall. It's just always satisfying to watch. Now, this is a massive mistake they made. They're trying to break one tower with the artillery because they are afraid of it or something. But when you neutralize it or capture it, it won't be in your favor again. And they're just wasting ammo. And you will also see late game that this tower will be decisive in the battle. So yeah, a terrible choice for them. Never waste your ammo on that. But on the other side, they also made some very nice moves. This scorpion, this sneaky silent sniper, was shooting my general Oswin, which is the perfect target to shoot for. It's a very expensive high tier plus a general unit. If they start shooting me while they were also attacking with their infantry I probably wouldn't see it and there we go this was probably one of my favorite snipes I walked all the way around them to snipe their artillery piece and I got some kills I didn't get as many kills as I would like to because the artillery piece has a stupid hitbox which protects their crew a little bit but I did damage I got 20 kills which is half of the unit so half of the ammo is gone and now I'm switching targets to the archer unit get some kills on both but I'm pretty sure they realized as soon as I shot their archers but it would have been funny if I could shoot this whole army and he didn't realize nothing so that shows the power of the sniping archer. I hope to see you guys use this tactic in some of your battles. It's very fun to do, but it's also easy to counter if you have a cover unit as an attacker. While I distracted them, my teammate came with a sneaky hillman attack and got a volley into his archers. So that's another tip, distraction is such an important element in total war battles. I'm now getting the rest of my sally out army closer to that one archer unit, because it's getting sandwiched by his one little javelin unit and his general unit. But I think he retreated because he saw my sally out army getting closer, so I got lucky there. And there you go, the last wall is going down and you can see that the attack are setting up to invade the city. The only thing is that my teammate still had two hillmen outside as a resistance and I think he had a plan with his archers to get some non shoot shots once they attacked his hillmen. But yeah he retreated his archers because he was getting bombarded by the artillery and now it's a little bit too late and his hillmen are dying very fast. So that was a little loss for us because we needed those pila volleys from those hillmen to throw at the royal spartans. But yeah mistakes are always made. And there you go this is something that they did very nice. They entered the city from all sides at once. We were getting overwhelmed with all our low tier troops. We were getting shot in the non 
on shield side they had archer support and everything so this area is already nearly lost and our units are still outside doing nothing he's getting into hoplite war which will give some bonus for his infantry and they are doing all the right stuff luckily my teammate did get a very nice back charge into these royal spartans and if you want to know how devastating that is to a hoplite and to any unit you got to watch this video where i show all the negative side effects of getting surrounded being tired being exhausted everything but he's getting counter charged again by heroes of sparta they look fucking awesome my scorpion that's outside is finally getting some action. He's sniping the pig peltas, which is such a dangerous unit. This unit can easily get 150 to 200 kills without trying that hard. So that's why I found a decent unit to go after. The surprising fact is that the Royal Spartans are losing men pretty fast. That's probably because they got surrounded and got all those debuffs. So knowing all the debuffs etc from that one video is very important. I'm now also forced to send my Oswin into battle because I had nothing left on that side. And they're just bombarding it with all their Agima spears, all their pig peltas and my Oswin is just dropping like crazy my poor Oswin man one two three four five five units just targeting that one Oswin six units focusing at my one Oswin but that's exactly what they needed to do and this is the other very powerful tactic getting non-shield shots from outside with your archers normally I shouldn't be able to get non-shield shots in this street but because I'm outside with my archers I am able to get those non-shield shots and do crazy damage against this general which is even better my teammate is mostly holding the right side and it's getting some excellent non-shield shots into the enemy which is perfect, we really need this because we're kinda losing the battle to be honest. We don't wanna give him non shoot side shots into us, Jesus that was hard to pronounce, but we still wanna neutralize the tower, so that's why we're holding right there. Over on my side I'm pursuing his general which is running away, which is psycho charging with his other royal spartans. I'm kinda surrounded over here and I don't have much infantry support, so my Oswin is all alone against all these Pila units, which is pretty scary. I only got this one little slinger doing some damage, but yeah I definitely need some more units right there, and a lot of my units are outside, and I will have to get some of those in side to help me with this street fights and what my enemy is doing right here is pretty smart he's sending his artillery crew which i didn't really see to try and kill some of my archers which is very smart of him i am retreating some of my celtics already inside but i will have to do it faster and my oswin is getting absolutely destroyed by all their pila units it's just rough to watch so make sure you don't make those mistakes my teammate over here pushed out a little bit too far and got absolutely destroyed by non shield side but it looks like he's doing his last stand over here so that's good he's neutralizing the tower and he's still getting some angles for his archers now people People often ask me the question, is front dumping worth it? Well this is a perfect example, two pig peltas units just front dumping one car loop. It is possible because just like I said before, pig peltas are so broken dumb strong that you just got to unleash all your ammo and don't die and you can just get your worth. And you can see it right here, it just annihilated that one car loop with half of its ammo, not even, probably one third. So yeah, you definitely can front dump, but preferably not, of course. And from this point, it's gonna be a massive grind for this choke point. But I wanna save that for another video, where I'll show you guys the best ways to grind down these type of choke points. So a massive fast forward, and we're now close to the end. If you look at the balance of power, it's not looking great for us. The gate tower was constantly shooting at us, but imagine having that second gate tower. That would be devastating, and that would probably won them the battle. But now I'm capturing the other tower with my general, which is still alive, shockingly. And that tower is definitely needed, and will do some crazy damage to those Agima Spears. And which can hopefully turn the tide in this battle. The Igima Sphere is getting into square formation which is a smart choice. He has expert charge defense also so my charge won't be as effective as normal. This is just a massive grind and let's see who comes out on top. There we go GG we won the battle but we only won with like 60 man difference so it was definitely not decisive and I did make some big mistakes with my Oswin. So yeah there was a lot to learn from this battle but let's now look at the kills and results. And yeah, as you can see, two of my Oceans got absolutely destroyed. My last general that survived to the end got actually 300 kills with, with 3 chevrons and did pretty good. My missile units did excellent. My scorpion could have done better because I wasn't really shooting royal spartans, which I would like to. The rest of my army did average. Sparta though got some pretty good kills with all of his units, but not that many chevrons. But he still did a good job. And that was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed the battle. If you did so, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to watch more content, I would definitely suggest to watch this video to discover all the hidden game mechanics and debuffs so i will see you guys there bye bye